you've uh, recently been on uh, Glenn Beck's program. Yeah. And there was this kind of, one of the things you've talked about is being able to have this conversation. We, I, I don't know if you would put it as a type of conversation that was happening outside the mainstream media, but a conversation that reaches across different worldviews. You're right. And having a nuanced or just like a respectful conversation that's grounded in mutual but we can't have the reality respect. because the main model is is um the center both left and right is in the process of stealing all the wealth that we built up and they've organized the extremes uh into two larping teams that i've called magistan and wokistan and then you have everybody who isn't part of that complex all seven of us the number of us who are able to earn a living looking at all of these mad people playing this game. You know, they, there's a phrase inside finance when the investment banks are trying to look at price action. And somebody says, this doesn't make any sense. And somebody will say, it's just the locals stealing from each other. And that's really what we have. We have we've got the leaders of Magistan and Wokistan uh, you know, championing these two tr teams is sponsored by the center because it's a distraction while they steal all the silver and cut the paintings out of the frames. That's what we, you and I are looking at. So when you ask me, like, do you have any ideas about the abstraction for free speech? Mm -hmm. I've never met Mark Zuckerberg. I've never met Sundar Pichai. I never met Larry Page. I was once in a room with Sergey Brin. I've never spoken to Elon Musk. I hang out with Peter Thiel, but we have a very deep relationship, but I don't really speak to that many other people at, at, you know, at sort of at this level. We're not having any kind of smart conversation at a national level. In fact, it's almost as if we've destroyed every sandbox in which we could play together. There's no place that we actually talk except long form podcasting. And by the way, they've found, you see what's going on with like Alex Stamos, no. And the Hoover Institution, we've you know, there's a loophole left. Oh, Long for, form uh, podcasting allows people to speak at levels above daytime CNN. Yeah, it's like, well, why do you think they're not watching daytime CNN? But you know, that's that's just silly journalism. They uh, currently have no power to displace podcasting. That's why it's so powerful. RSS feed. I mean, that's why the big challenge with Joe Rogan and Spotify is like there's this dance that's fascinating to see. Is Joe Rogan is not part of the system, and then he's also uncancelable, and there's this tension that's happening. Well, it's think about what happened to Howard Stern though. Howard Stern became much less relevant. So if they can't control Joe by bringing him in house, mm -hmm. the key question is, is he going to continue? Like, you know, this Joe says this thing about FU money. Yeah. Joe's one of the only people with FU money who's actually said FU. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand this. I don't have FU money. What What exactly is, can, can we break apart sure. FU money? Because yeah. I always thought I've been fortunate enough to have always have a few money in the sense that my standards were so low that a basic salary in the United States. Well, this is the stoic point, which is that if yeah. you can live on rice and beans, right. you're uncancelable because you're always rich relative to your needs. Right. Isn't that a few fundamental a few money? Why do you say that tech billionaires don't have a few money? When you need to hire private security to protect your family, how do you protect your two children? I don't have those yet. Bingo. Yeah. My point is, is that FU money insulates everything that you care about. It's not just about you. So you're saying as the level of responsibility grows, the amount of money required for FU. We, we have grows. a war going on. The war is on academic freedom. Academic freedom used to be present in the system as a, in terms of the idea we, we trust our elite. Mm -hmm. Now we have an idea like, you want to be the elite, you know, you want a Lord above us. That's like, first of all, there's like a populist anti-elitist thing. Then there's the idea that um, we're going to defer tenure for forever. Then we're going to tell people stay in your lane. Your tenure is only good for your own particular tiny micro subject. And then we're going to also control your grants and we'll be able to load up your teaching load if we don't like who you are and we'll make your life absolutely impossible. We lost academic freedom. 
and we ushered in peer review, which was a disaster. And then we lost funding so that people were confident that they would have the ability to do research no matter what they said. And as a result, what you find is, is a world in which there's no ability to get people to say, no, I'm not gonna sign your diversity and inclusion forced loyalty oath. I won't sign any loyalty oath. Get the hell out of my office. Uh, F you. F you, and you're, you're connecting money to that, but. Well, my point is, is that academic freedom is the, the whole idea behind it was that you will have the freedom of a billionaire on a much smaller salary. Right. Okay. We've lost that. Yeah. The only reason in part that I wanted to go in, into academic academics as a profession, as opposed to wanting to do physical or mathematical research, the great prize was freedom. And R Ralph Gomery uh, of the Sloan Foundation, previously of IBM Research, pointed it out. He says, if, if you lose freedom, you lose the only thing we had to offer top minds. Top minds value their intellectual freedom and their physical and economic security at a different level than other human beings. And so people say, you know, I don't understand, dude. You have the ability to do X, Y, and Z. What's the problem? It's like, well, I value my ability to raise the middle finger as an American practically above everything else.